Hello, I am Bill Gemmert. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Brit Insurance and I'm here to represent. Please, can you explain in two or three sentences what you do day to day? Um, I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Brit Insurance. I lead the technology and the data teams and work with the business stakeholders in using technology to add commercial value and innovate in the London market. Please, can you tell us about your early career and how it got you to where you are today? I've studied computer engineering in Turkey about 20 years ago now, and I was the only girl in my class. I've really enjoyed maths at school. I really like problem solving, and I was encouraged to do an engineering course. So I was really excited going in, and but very shortly I realized I'm the only female in the room. So it was a bit different. I was studying out of town as well, so I felt a bit lonely at the start. I did question if this is the right thing, but um, I really enjoyed my study. So I think it went in, in the over time, I've built really good relationships with some of my um, some of my friends at university as well so that helped me um, for the next four years um, at the end of my university degree I took a uh, traineeship opportunity and worked in Germany for six months in an IT support department I went back to Turkey started a master's and then I took an opportunity as a graduate trainee with Mondelez to, to work in London um, I thought I would go back and do my master's but there were so many opportunities in London so many different career paths so many things to learn so much travel. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed it and I stayed. And one of the things that I have very positively learned, and um, that is IT, working in technology roles, is not only about um, sitting in front of your computer. Of course, there's a lot of things that we do as we coding, but it's all about engaging with business, understanding, solving problems, adding value. And you get to also uh, work in various different companies and get to opportunity to travel because we live in a multinational world. And if you're working in one of these organizations, you can really get to see the world as well. So I really enjoyed those aspects of my role. And I've changed a few companies. I I worked in consulting for a few years, so that really helped me to really move from an expertise um, type of role to a managerial type of role, an advisory type of role. So that really helped me to propel my career and build more confidence in my abilities. And I've increased my responsibilities from then. So I've got 20 years in technology and data careers, which, which has been all really enjoyable. What's a personal strength of yours that has led to your success as a tech leader? I think the ability to be able to bring people together, collaborate, communicate, change manage, these are all really important skills that I think that helped me and actually that also differentiated me as well from some of my colleagues um, so that I could bring the analytical side of things and the technical expertise, but also the ability to bring people together and help us drive towards outcomes. What are the biggest advantages of working in a technology role? Um, from a professional level, it's just been a hugely growing industry and I think it will continue to grow. So if you're really looking at growing your career, either in a vertical level or in lateral modes, there's a lot of opportunity here. Technology moves and grows all, all the time. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to stay in technology, because I'm a person who likes to learn new things all the time. I get curious, I get bored if I'm doing the same thing all the time. So I think from a, a professional point of view it's really allowed me to grow and from a personal point of view I've uh, mentioned at the start I enjoy the travel I enjoy meeting people from different cultures and backgrounds and technology is a huge diverse environment um, I have worked in many projects where we would truly see diversity and we would all work towards the same problems I think not I think in many lines of business you see that um, so that's something that I personally enjoy both uh, professionally and, and personally what barriers have you faced and overcome as a woman in tech? Because I was the only girl in my class, um, there was a little bit of a, am I fitting in the right organization here, in the right place, in the right career? I think I had a lot of situations where people didn't think that I was studying computer science. <laughs> they thought maybe I'm in, a, in another field. Um, I think there's been certain areas, it's just unconscious bias affecting you. You don't get the visibility because they don't think you're the person who could do the job or they would just naturally, even I think without being mean, they would naturally not think that you are the coder in the room. <laughs> You are maybe working in marketing, finance, other roles where, you know, you see more women, but not in coding. So I think it took a while for me to build my visibility and confidence and voice and also feel more assertive in that environment. Um, so um, I think that is something that I would encourage all women, whether you're a new joiner or whether you've had industry experience, but going into a more male dominated industry to work on. I think the good thing is there is a lot more access to um, resources at the moment. There are networks, there are gatherings, there are more role models. So I think 
think they're people that you can really look up to and learn from, and you can build those networks and allies to support you as well, not only women, but only males. We see a lot more males who want to see more women in the industry and doing great work to support them. What advice would you give any woman wanting to find a mentor? Having the right connection with the mentor is important, um, for sure, within organisations. I mean, at um, Brits, we're really encouraging mentoring and support. So I think being in the right organisation is also helpful. That really encourages that. In Accenture, we always had career counsellors, male or female, if everybody would help someone who could support them. I think um, if the organisation doesn't necessarily have those programmes, it might be again a bit scary, but having the confidence to go and speak to most women who are in these positions have gone through the same challenges and we want to give back. We want to have the opportunity. And when you see people who've got potential and wants to do well and wants to work hard, because we are also to the benefit of the organizations, I mean, we want to give back, but also we do need people who wants to succeed in the, um, in the career. So I would say go out there, be really clear of what you want to achieve and be clear of your strengths. So I think having some self-reflection and knowing what you want to get out of the mentoring is helpful but there's a lot of people out there who you can and you can support and be encouraged to go after what you really want what advice would you give to any woman facing imposter syndrome i think first of all it's good to acknowledge that imposter syndrome is very real and it's not only for new joiners we all have it at all levels so i think being awareness of that is almost like one step towards being um being in a position that you know where this is really kicking in and what you can do in terms of coping mechanisms because i feel it at my level i'm sure when you speak to my peers as well you'll have similar situations we all doubt ourselves so i think on, on top of everything that i've mentioned in terms of networks and building the confidence what's also really important is being in, open to taking risks and challenges because that's when you grow so i think sometimes you might be and i see that a lot with women that i'm mentoring as well you might be sitting in our comfort zone for a little bit more. Um, so I think really taking the risk, moving, and of course, checking in with your support network and allies, being real on where you want to grow, but having an open mindset to things like we all fail, we all make mistakes. So don't worry about making mistakes. I think it's more important to try. And it's what's not really good is if you don't try. <laughs> so I think trying and failing is not a problem. Um, so it's more about if having taking that risk, having a growth mindset and growing yourself and taking those opportunities, even though it might seem, seem a bit scary at the start you realize very shortly that I have the ability to do this. I can really deliver and that helps you build confidence as well. What successful techniques have you seen or used to make job specs appeal to diverse candidates? I think that's hugely important. Um, at Swiss Re, for example, in my previous organization, we actually use tools to make sure that we're using the job scale specs to have a more inclusive language that it actually it's supporting across all genders. I think awareness, again, is the most important thing. I think it's the starting point because sometimes when we go in, you're not even aware of it, but having awareness, conscious, really looking at how you can adjust the job specs, so you're using the right language, so you are also making making sure that the roles are really unbiased towards people coming from different backgrounds. So it's not only about gender either, people from coming from different backgrounds is very important. I think more about the inter interview panels as well and having a in uh, diverse interview panel so that we're not um, getting perspectives from a certain um, part of the business, but we really have a more holistic look at, uh, look at the talent when we are assessing talent. Again, that is not only about gender, but across all areas of diversity so that we really uh, truly open and we're getting that feedback is very important and it's not only about recruitment as well it's about what are the working environments that you're creating so there are some working mothers that we have so I think having some flexibility around maybe early starts and early finish so that they can do the school run again being flexible to maybe doing some part-time work in certain roles and that's as, as, I think especially in tech careers it, there's more possibilities of doing that so creating an environment not only to recruit but to grow and retain the talent is hugely important because as I said the hybrid working flexible working it's all leading us towards a place where we can create that healthy environment where we get a diverse innovative organization and still get our outcomes uh, but making sure that we bring people along with us from all backgrounds
What advice would you give women wanting to make a career switch to tech with no previous tech experience? I think in terms of technical fields, um, just being part of the communities like Stack Overflow is really helpful so that you're part of a more wider technical community and grow your career. In terms of um, the leadership um, parts, I think being part of networks, being part of um, support groups is important. So looking at where you can join them, because there's a lot of various different support groups on LinkedIn, which, whichever one that works for you, so that you're part of a community who's also getting into tech, maybe new. I'm sure Call for Skills is also looking at building these communities so that the uh, interns are learning from each other. So I think being part of that to build leadership and um, more stakeholder management and business skills is important, as well as continue to grow your technical skills, because your training is just the starting point. <laughs> it gives you a flavor of what's to come. And there's a huge community out there. And what's really amazing is a really active community. So when you have questions in the past, when I started, we didn't have those communities, so you had to learn everything from scratch. Now there's a huge community that can support you. So don't be worried about reusing and leveraging what's been done out there that, that can help you uh, build your skills.